Hello, Anadorks! It is Chris here. In case you couldn't tell, I have some wonderful bone-chilling news to tell you, which is that last weekend, Miranda and Eddie and I got together and recorded the first four episodes of our watch-along Animorphs Nickelodeon TV show podcast. So, Patreon subscribers of the top-tier level, you will be getting your first episode of that oh so soon. Thank you for your patience. And for the mid-tier subscribers, you will have our coveted notes from Book 8, um, in a wonderful formatting job that Eddie has done. And um, we just are so grateful for the support. And without further ado, here's the episode. In 1996, Scholastic began publishing Animorphs. Over the next six years, Catherine Applegate and her husband, Michael Grant, under the pseudonym K.A. Applegate, produced 54 main series books, several spinoffs, and inspired a TV series, graphic novels, and a cult following. We can't tell you where we live. We can't even tell you our last names. But we can tell you our thoughts and feelings on this series, book by book. I'm Miranda. I'm Eddie. And I'm Chris. And we are... The Anadorks! <laughs> These may be kids' books, but we discuss dark themes and mature content. There may also be some explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Should we, so you should we talk yeah. about book nine? How do we wanna how do we do this, you guys? Well, what did can we well no, I guess we didn't finish it. I was gonna ask what did we think of book nine? Um, I thought it was great. I yeah. finished. I thought the beginning was a little bit wobbly. Yep. And I was confused by the setup, but I really <laughs> f- I felt like something got paid off. Yeah, I definitely yeah. felt good at the end. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if that was intentional on the book's <laughs> part. I can't quite tell if it did what it, it set out to do, but I, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I like that it That's, does feel yeah. like the Cassie books maybe ask the most of the characters of, like, interiority. I feel like they, like, mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. they wrestle with questions and, like, the ethics of being an anamorph. Very true. I was also very there silly. There were a couple. Yeah. There were, I mean, four also had a sort of, like, directionlessness until it didn't. Like, the dreams were kind of vague, yeah, and then true. there like there was just the episode where they all fainted because of the dreams and that was like a thing and that kind of helped move things along. The dreams but were like, a great setup though. I felt like that was like really mysterious and interesting. Yeah. Um, and we kind of get a not a redo, but like a continuation of the ant stuff too. Yeah, we time. finally come yeah. back to that. Yeah. So this book starts off totally differently than every other book. Um, I'm just kidding. That was only true last book. It starts off pretty much exactly the same. Yes. So we have book nine, The Secret. Book nine, The Secret. Narrated by Cassie. We're back to Cassie. Mm -hmm. And it starts off strong with a classic. My name is Cassie. I can't tell you my last name. I wish you could. It's kind of a nice last name. And I like, you know, I like that she says she has a last name. (laughs) And that's great. But it's getting to the point, guys, where I feel like we need stand in last names for these people. Like, I can't handle I can't handle this. I have some ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, Okay. they're not they're not good. And the reason why they're not good is because you don't want your working title to necessarily be good enough to be your final title. Right. It's like you just stick for a while, but it's not going to stay. It's going to stick. Right. Yeah, exactly. So for Cassie. You know, maybe Cassie Estreen tells us a little bit about herself. Mm-hmm. It's easy to keep for um, these other ones really aren't good. We've got Rachel Smith. Um, <laughs> we've got Jake Andalite. We've got <laughs> Principal Chapman Chapman. That one's kind of easy and nice because it's just Chapman again. Mm-hmm. It's also a double last name, which is cool. And that got me thinking Rachel Rachel might be better than Rachel Smith. But this one's my favorite. Marco Man Randy Savage. Okay, yeah, no, I'm sold on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That one that one I'll take. So Chapman, <laughs> right, cool. we have Principal Chapman Chapman. What did we actually know you're giving him a first name? His first name is Chapman. Yeah. I guess his first name is Principal <laughs> Chapman. 
Okay, Principal Chapman. Or maybe it's Assistant? Assistant Principal Chapman, yeah. Yeah, he is. it's Assistant Principal Chapman. How embarrassing. My goodness. (laughs) We still don't know who the principal is. That's true. (laughs) The principal is yurked by a completely different alien race that is also (laughs) invading Earth. (laughs) Yeah. So we get Cassie catching us up, like always. I don't think we learn that much. No, Cassie jumps in on the taxon hate a little bit, which I think is out of character, Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, she calls them the evil cannibalistic taxon controllers. Which, I'm still not clear on this. I thought the taxons were helping voluntarily. I didn't realize that they were all controllers. I think they voluntarily got controlled themselves, got yurked. Yeah. So you think there's a uh, yurk in every taxon? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and a turkey on every promise. table. But yeah. yeah, that's a problem. A yurk in every year. Yeah. <laughs> um, Every yurker said that. Yeah, we don't. So what did we determine? We, we, Miranda, you said at some point that the size of the head seems to be important. I yeah, guess we don't, it, yes. it probably doesn't. It's probably not I, but important. I like it. I want it. I'm going to hold to it, it until is, it gets proven incorrect. But it is important. We know that it's important because they can't do cats. But they've never talked about that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm holding on to it. I'm holding on to it. We have to care. Yeah. We have to care. So the <laughs> we're just, just five shit. steps ahead. That's really right. What's the name scores. of our conspiracy? What's the name of our conspiracy theory podcast again? Applegate. Applegate. Yeah. Applegate, where we talk about the fact that she's afraid to come on our show, yeah, yeah. because we're gonna we're gonna take her to task for some of these inaccuracies, and yeah. we're gonna see where the money actually went. Yeah, follow the money. Yeah, follow the money. It always works. <laughs> right back to Scholastic. The every Scholastic time. Right, money. Yeah. right back, right to the top of the eggs tower. Yeah. yeah. You would you believe it's actually all going to feed Clifford? <laughs> The big gay red dog. That kid eats a lot of eggs. Yeah, Yeah, the big gay red dog. (laughs) Shin Clifford. Cassie stays late at school Mm -hmm. to troubleshoot a makeup science project involving a rat in a maze. All right, she's doing the classic rat in a maze. Her intelligence is going to skyrocket and then it's going to slowly descend just once she's been able to understand how above all others she is. We have this maze. We have Courtney. and (laughs) Courtney the rat. Courtney's Courtney the rat, the, named character. Yes, named, named rat Courtney. Because she is close to, like, getting a bad grade. Specifically she, a D. A D. And she has asked Rachel to stay with her because her rat is supposed to go through this maze because he smells like the nuts and seeds or right. cheese or whatever at the end. Mm-hmm. They're debugging her rat. Right. <laughs> yes. Because, because the rat is not going through the maze properly. Yeah, it's, it's not going just anywhere. Not it's moving just at like, all. And so she wants to find out what's going on with the rat and with her experiment by morphing into the rat. And for some reason, Rachel has to do this with her. Yes. Yes. This leads to one of the silliest progression. Like when they're talking about her getting a D. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty silly. Like because Cassie starts to get very frustrated with Courtney, (laughs) which is a little right. She starts calling like she's like, are you just a stupid rat? What's your problem? (laughs) No, no, no. Rachel Rachel's calls the one who calls her a stupid rat. rat. And she's Cassie the would one never. Cassie's upset. She does, however, give very clear instructions. Smell the nuts. Yes. Smell the smell nuts the and nuts. then find your way through the maze. Yeah. Which, Courtney looked up at me know? and twitched. <laughs> and then and then Cassie flips her shit. Fucking she's just like, that's not an answer. You can't just twitch your tail and look up at me like that. I need this grade. I am not going to try and explain a D to my parents just because you can't get it together, Courtney. <laughs> it is really a lot of pressure to place on a rat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, yeah. We should say for context that Cassie is falling behind in school because she's working as an anamorph. She's helping her dad with the wildlife rehabilitation clinic in their barn. Um, it's three it, jobs this kid's working. Yeah. Um, what was the first job again? School. Okay. Yeah, so she feels a lot of pressure because her grades have been dropping. So they decide they're going to mouse morph. Yep. Rat morph. Rat this morph. pissed me off so much. To try to me- determine from Courtney's point of view what was keeping her from getting the snack and mm-hmm. going through the maze. And rather than do a solo rat morph and have Rachel watch guard and explain any situations that are weird, Cassie gets real fucking weird and insists that Rachel does it with her. Her reasoning is simply that she never ratted on her for the elephant morph. Which I guess was a pretty dank pun if they actually used the verb rat. (laughs) Um, 
<laughs> they didn't. Or is that just, they definitely didn't. You just did that. I did that. Why? Why do I have to morph her at? Remember the time you wanted to scare that guy with the elephants? Wasn't I there for you then? Besides, we can't leave till I try to figure this out. Rachel rolled her eyes. Okay, that made absolutely no sense, but I'll do it anyway. Let's just get it over. <laughs> And then they do. <laughs> I guess the idea maybe for Cassie was because Rachel suggests morph the rat. Maybe you can see what his her its problem is. And Cassie says, I could do that. But see, if Jake found out, you know, the rule, no morphing except when necessary. So maybe she's just trying to get even though they're already Someone in else on it to together. break the rules yeah. with her. Yeah, she mm-hmm. wants mm-hmm. which seems kind yeah, of like and Cassie. It, yeah. So, yeah, we get some rat morph descriptions and then descriptions of being in rat morph and climbing things and mm-hmm. cassie made a little staircase of books to help them get into the yeah. maze yeah but when they morph, they could have just uh, when they morph we do get the line my face bulged like a zit about the pop which i thought was like the one true. good morphing line but i feel like we maybe got I a think zit. i blanked that out um, i i was like that's the grossest thing i've read all year no it's not there have been grosser moments than that i feel like but <laughs> I don't feel like there's a ton to hit here. I kind of felt like this was one of the We throwaways. do get a scoot. Yes, we do get a scoot. Oh, yeah, we got a scooted along the corner of the wall with Rachel right behind me. Yes. It's been a long time since we got a scoot, but it's back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The scoots yeah. are back in town. The scoots are back in town. So Cassie goes to do the maze while Rachel stands guard in Rat Morph. And mm-hmm. Cassie puts like together. Tale of Nim, Secret of Nim style, holding a little, like, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, dressed up like a little Renaissance mouse. So Cassie realizes that she can't smell the nuts she realizes that it's probably the ceiling fan fan that was left as far away as the moon she says and that's what's causing it but then before they can morph back two boys show up a couple of psychopaths yeah yeah a couple rat killing psychopaths and are just Uh like let's let's torture animals like Mm -hmm. hey look rats an impossibly loud voice shouted a boy, I was sure of that. I didn't recognize the specific psychopath, but I recognized the tone. He was looking for trouble. Gross! Someone should exterminate him. I hate living beings. I exaggerate a little bit. He just says he hates rats. And, and the, yeah, the, and then they so they grab a broom yep. and start smacking at them on the table. We get a lot of wham, thud, thwack. They upend the maze and dump them out of it. The third dimension, the ultimate way to solve a two dimensional maze. (laughs) Cassie. (laughs) Just go up, idiot. (laughs) Cassie climbs up like one of the pant legs, right? They have a thing where they're like, oh, we can run. And then they get like empowered in their exhaustion of running. They're like, I'm fucking tired of running. I want to give these guys a taste of their own medicine. And that's when they run up the the boys and start biting the shit out of them. Yeah. Which is. (laughs) sends the boys off running. Courtney escapes. They Courtney also, gets away. Courtney escapes, but they also express like, like Cassie feels some sort of like kinship or sisterhood even to this rat that they've morphed in identical DNA um, that they're now like, you know, they've endangered the life of the rat by giving up their humanness. So, but in their struggles against teenage boys, they have bonded and, um, <laughs> and they've gotten very close. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. They're very close. Mm-hmm. Soul sisters. Yeah. And they, they say that Courtney must have gone to live in the school walls. So after a relatively and thankfully short intro shenanigan, as we get in these books, mm-hmm. we finally get to why we came here. Mm-hmm. What we're here for, we're going to have a meeting in the wildlife rehabilitation clinic. Um, also known as Cassie's Barn. I have one question. Sure. Which sister do you think got the perm? At the end of chapter two, they like escape and then they like demorph and then they get their shit together and they go to Rachel's house and give Rachel's younger sister a perm. Do you guys have a canonical answer to this or should we save say, this for K.A.? I would say the middle child just because you don't want to put chemicals on a <laughs> seven-year-old. On um, babies. Oh, okay. Jordan. Okay, that's Jordan? Funny. Middle child? Jordan? Uh, wh- They're or a little Sarah, bit interchangeable one of them. for me. <laughs> one of them. They don't even know which one it was. Cassie is already working in her barn when, when, they're, when they have this meeting and Rachel shows up first and starts teasing her about her, her outfit. 
Does it like bother you guys that she's never ready for the meeting? <laughs> like that would bother like it would. I get that she's really busy, but like that would bother the hell out of me. It's like the person who hosts the meeting. But then it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, seven o'clock still fine. I just I'm going to have to do the dishes, take out the trash, wash the bathroom, like whatever. You know, like and then they're like suddenly the meeting's always starting at seven thirty. I don't Cassie. think it's a hard seven. <laughs> they're animorphs. I don't know, man. They get there when All they right. get there. Also, I don't think Cassie volunteered to host the meetings. I think it's just that she has. Yeah. The- space. I think it's been decided for her. I feel no empathy. Okay. No sympathy. Nothing I feel. Well, we have to hit at least that Rachel smiles with her 10,000 bright white teeth, which is that <laughs> a side effect of your face? Like, uh, <laughs> like, Rachel, oh, yeah, threatens Rachel to was put being Cassie, a total jerk. Yeah, she threatens to put Cassie in a dress. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Enforcing the gender roles. Yes. I didn't realize that Rachel, you can Rachel keep was the, the big rubber boots, though. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but I'm you're getting you a dress. And then Cassie asks, you're you're kidding, right? You can never be totally sure with Rachel. And then she smiles at ten thousand white bright white. <laughs> with her ten thousand deep. Yes, then Jake and so Marco show up. Um, Marco, talk- the voice of reason, comes in and is very clear that there's no reason at all that Batman could ever beat Spider Man. Spider Man has actual powers. It's it just mm-hmm. it just That's goes without saying. And Jake yeah. very confusingly says that Batman's <laughs> body armor. <laughs> Would mm-hmm. is anti web, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which like doesn't that doesn't really make sense. It's he, he can't have infinite hours to have prepared for all situations, right? Like, he wants it's to just, believe me, he wants to, but well, his second kid still died. So, mm-hmm. notice that Jake immediately deflects by going, Homer, stay out here, boy, you can't go in. He's trying this to was move the on. Weirdest. This was the weirdest thing. As someone who hasn't finished the book, this also really <laughs> hit me as just like Chris. We're gonna I'm make sorry. it sound like we did finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I didn't finish yeah, yeah, the book. Yeah. You guys finished the as book, but I'm just saying like the book. I get it. <laughs> I wonder if this will pay off. <laughs> I just we haven't seen Homer in so many books. I feel like it's been a while. What are you talking no, about? Why are you teasing. laughing? Uh, Why is Miranda <laughs> laughing at me? Homer is here visiting the barn, but not allowed in the barn. And we do get the detail that Homer, being a dog, believes small animals are meant to be chased. Uh, oh, oh, I can see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we should do every book. <laughs> we get that Jake is really good looking inside and out. That's Cassie's yeah, observation. I don't get that one. It's a strange yeah, one. Yeah. That's really bizarre. Um, what she means is he's just an amazingly cool guy. And his innards are sure cute. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, Cassie tells us that Jake and I are kind of, you know, we like each other. As in, like. I don't buy it. <laughs> what are you hiding? <laughs> <laughs> we get a bit about Marco. We go kind of through the introductions here, right? Is there anything we really want to... We get that Cassie's bad about bad at lying and that Jake has definitely heard and figured out that she and Rachel were rats earlier chasing some guys. Yes. And Cassie gives away. She's bad at lying because whenever she tries, she makes a fakey shrill sound. Yeah. Which how do we think that sounds? Do you think it's an additional sound? I'm not doing anything. To her talking? Like, yeah, is it or like... Because is, is, is it like, really? I didn't hear about yes, that. Yes, that's or actually... Is it, yeah. Really? I didn't hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was thinking it would... I was thinking that it would come before that. would be like, oh, I didn't hear anything about that. <laughs> like Or something like that. Or just like... Oh, I, I don't I know like, about that. I, I like just the unsettling about. sound. I like Miranda. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like... Oh, Rachel has uh, 10,000 teeth and Cassie emits this weird <laughs> high-pitched noise sometimes. Yeah, it's actually yeah, it's not, not from her mouth at yeah. all. It's actually like like feedback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like moral feedback. Yeah. It's like you put the, the moral microphone too close to the moral speaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we find out that Axe and Tobias actually are the reason they're having the meeting. They seem to have like learned something. Um, and right when Jake brings this up, Tobias comes flying into the barn. Uninvited. Uninvited. Which means he's not a vampire. We learned that he and 
Rachel have been hanging out in the evenings? Yeah, he's Yo, been going to Rachel's so room and eating popcorn and watching movies. Yeah, yeah and Netflix eating. and Netflix and Burb. She turns the pages and, for it. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, that's like unbelievably adorable. And Axe is not coming because he's keeping an eye on things. Right. right. And so we learn <laughs> so we learn this and Rachel when she sees Tobias come in is like, "Oh hey, you know, I thought maybe you'd stop by last night. AKA, where the fuck were you?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh-huh. Tobias is like, "Oh, I was I was gonna." But there was this <laughs> thing with Axe. A totally platonic thing with Axe. <laughs> yeah. And so it seems like Axe and Tobias have noticed somebody setting up a logging operation in the middle of the forest. Mm -hmm. And immediately Cassie goes, no way! She cries this out. The others were less upset. And then she continues on. So Marco's kind of like, so what? And she's like, so the habitat will be destroyed. So animals will be made homeless. So old growth trees will be chopped down to make plywood. That's so what? And I feel like this is where Cassie's at the rest of the book, but we have, it makes sense that Cassie's like the environmentally conscious member. Like that's a big part of her motivation, but she just shows Mm -hmm. up already really upset about these. Well, it's like zero to a hundred is kind of how I felt. Yeah. She is in a really high stress situation. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She did tell us about her three jobs. Yeah. 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 But you, but I mean, you're right that like thematically speaking, it's not like they mentioned the forest that they did. Kind of like try and hit it, I guess, by saying it would be too late for the Earth. Like in the beginning of the book, they're talking about like stopping the Yorks before it's too late. And then she says too late for the Earth, which like was sort of like. That's true. Her favoring the Earth as an organism and not just humanity. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. was, I guess, established alongside the Elemist and also book four. Yeah. And also her, her, her whale big stuff. thing book four, when she heard that Yorks wipe out all life, it almost felt to me like she was holding on to this shred of hope that like even if they did fail earth would maybe go on and so to find out that it wasn't just coming to wipe out humans it was coming to wipe out everything Mm -hmm. i think took away her one last thing she could possibly use to make peace with the idea of losing this war yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it is freaking out about one forest especially yeah (laughs) Yes. It's just, yeah. But, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere. And you don't it's get more specific forest. over the course of the book. Like she gets more specific concerns within this forest mm-hmm. and reasons to care about it. So Tobias mentions this logging camp. This is going to be the big problem of the book. And Cassie is immediately like at this uh, like energy about it. This emotional yeah, and frequency. It takes one more thing for everyone else to get on board yes. with how freaked Cassie is. And that's when they find out that. This command center deep in the forest that they're building is surrounded by a force field. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is like hitting a wall and guarded by armed guards with automatic weapons. Yeah. It's so it's so funny, too, because in um, in reading this, when they said it was surrounded by a force field, I got like disproportionately angry at like, how did you detect that? What? How did you know? And then like next sentence, yeah, next sentence, it's like, and it was like hitting a wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess I should have just waited half a sentence later. Also, it's it just it's a callback. I have to assume it's the same kind of force field that was around the truck ship. to the truck. Yeah. Ship? And the clo- well, the truck oh, ship. Was I always cloaked. just assumed he flew into the truck flew into ship. the truck ship, and because the truck cloaked. ship was invisible. Yeah. I was imagining that the truck ship had a force build, but it is actually just that it's cloaked, and that's what they were crashing into. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, that's what it seemed like because when he crashed into it, like didn't like it temporarily become visible again or something? When the other birds like, like, right where he it. hit it, yeah. When the other birds hit yeah. it, the geese hit yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, or whatever. yeah. I'm, I'm probably just misremembering, yeah. <laughs> Man, that those geese were really more symbolic of this adventure we've been on than <laughs> I realized, which is that, like, our five little intrepid animorphs just really throw themselves <laughs> yeah, up against the, medical, the metaphorical truck down ship. by yeah. something no one else can see. <laughs> yeah, oh, my true. God. Yeah. It's the perfect metaphor. Yeah. Rachel asks, are they, is it, it must be Yerks, right? But why would the Yerks want to be logging in the forest? And then Cassie says the Yerks plan was all too obvious to her. They want to destroy habitat, but it's not owl habitat that they want to destroy. They're after a different species. They're after what they believe are the Andalite bandits and that they figure that they're hiding in those forests. In the forest. Yeah. 
Yes, Tobias agreed. They're going to wipe out the habitat of the very, very endangered Animorph. Yeah. Only six left. Only mm-hmm. five human left. Mm-hmm. Only four humans left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're down to four humans. A burb and um, Chucky Finster. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's something earlier in, just like a, a bit earlier in the chapter that I want to hit, because I, when I was rereading this, I noticed it. So uh, there's a point where, and it's more just like flagging it so we can come back to it later. When Tobias enters the bar and he asks what happened to the golden eagle, and Cassie yeah. says he's all better, so we released him. And she says, and then she thinks to herself, see golden eagles occasionally kill and eat hawks. And then she tells Tobias, we released him back in the hills, though. Nowhere near your territory, Tobias. Tobias didn't look too happy. And this dynamic between Cassie and Tobias, I just think it's interesting through the books because there's a lot of talk about habitats and Miranda, are you, do you remember what the, the conversation is? I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. There's just an ongoing dynamic in this book and also in book four of Cassie's comfort level with Tobias's predator nature. Yes. Yeah. And her own, what we, what we're going to see a lot more of in this book is why nature would make her uncomfortable when she feels she loves it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's more to do with her participation in it. Yes, yeah. And then there's also questions, I think, of, like, at what point does, like, when you're intervening or inter- inter- intervening in, like, a habitat or in nature to try to help, and then you actually have consequences that you don't intend, or when you're trying to protect yourself, but then you end up interfering. Oh, no. And so I just wanted to flag it because I think the dynamic between, I, we get a lot of interpersonal drama in the group in this book, and I love it. Yes. And, and I think having Cassie and Tobias, two of, like, the more... They, they don't they don't have as they're, they're not involved in as much of the conflict they feel like in the books. And the fact that they get a little bit of tension with each other is just kind of. Yeah. And you could already get a glimpse yeah. of it here. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited to read on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we hop into chapter four. So basically chapter what ha- four. happens here is that they make a plan to go investigate the logging camp. Yeah, they're right? just going to they're just going to peep it. They're just going to mm-hmm. drop by. Check it out. Yeah, so they decide to split up. So Marco and Cassie turn into wolves, um, and Jake and Rachel, along with Tobias, are going to be like eyes in the sky, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Axe is still not here. I guess he's just not a part of this plan, right? Well, yeah, he hadn't come to the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. They do bring up an interesting detail about like how they got permission to chop up the forest. But there was another question bothering me. How did they ever get permission to cut the trees in the National Forest? Yes, they plant the seed here. Yes, yeah. Yeah, Marco rolled his eyes like I was being an idiot. Who cares? The fact is they did. That that is something that comes up again later. So Cassie's thinking about this question of how, why there's a logging camp in a National Forest. We also get that... Cassie kind of has some beef with Marco, or at least Cassie finds Marco annoying sometimes. Friction. Yeah, yeah there's friction. friction. Yeah. 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 Like, like he grinds my nerves sometimes, yeah. is how she puts it. She, Which is nice to hear like her. The way the groups have been split up, she wanted to go with Rachel. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I, I, I do like that sort of a detail because we don't hear her like sour about things yeah. very often, especially about other people. Yeah. And also that comes back to the the rat thing from the beginning, which is that Jake's doesn't put Cassie and Rachel together because they egg each other on. And she feels like he definitely knows about what happened at the school. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, but it's hard for me to hear that. I mean, I know it's a harmless thing that's going to happen in the friend group, but. I feel like the the pool scene with between Marco and Cassie seemed like such strong connection that it's a little bit. I don't think we got a good indi- We know Marco annoys everyone, but all of a sudden now that Cassie's saying this, the pool scene. Oh, when they're the um, scene sorry, by the empty from pool Megamorphs? apartment. No, by the, the scene by the empty pool. Uh, yeah, that's not that the. Pool it took me scene. a second to click on that too. First, I was like, when were okay. they in a pool together? That, right, right. The, Act two, book five. The image right. of the the leaves. In the bottom of the pool. Oh, it's in book, book four. four. Book sorry. four, yeah. Book four. The, um, the leaves in the bottom of the pool is what stays in my Yeah, it's memory. no, it's stayed yeah. forever. Yeah. So they morph 
the wolf couple. Yes. The same wolf, actually. They morphed the same wolf. So they're... Which is canon. That's canon from all the way back in book three. Yep, book three. Yeah. So if they are the wolf couple, there's some problems here, but it's fine. <laughs> this is actually the second instance of this happening already, this book, of them, of multiple... Morphing the same Morphs creature. into the same yeah, DNA that's true. set. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And actually, it's going to happen a third time. Yeah. There's a good little moment. I feel like I'm going to carry this thread now through the book. Gentle Cassie is morphed into this wolf, and she's going to bring this up with her next morph, I think, in the book. But she's kind of she's thinking about the fact that her human mouth is becoming a wolf's mouth and could now cut it. Her human mouth could barely cut through a tough steak, but now the wolf jaw and teeth could tear the throat out of a living struggling deer so she's turning into these things that have like appetites and like more violent yeah. urges i yeah. will say i really thought you said the wolf john <laughs> the wolf john and yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then i realized you said jaw and teeth yeah and i was a little jaw. a little disappointed to be yeah. honest <laughs> i did like when marker called her the morphing queen because it immediately started playing out yeah. yes yeah. yes you are the morphing, morphing queen, queen. <laughs> uh, marco once again morphs into a wolf. I, this just seems like it's going to be a running thing of him talking while he's morphing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he does a lot he, until his mouth can't form. Though, like he, he can't. Yeah, he gets. It really see reminds me. me. Yeah, um, we have an all fours moment. Yeah, we really do have an all fours moment. It happened. Uh, you know, they snuck it in there. Yeah, and then they run through the forest to where where they need to go to find this. Uh, they, yeah, they, they just they go zooming the along wolf, the wolf twilight. Yeah, we exactly. get a we They're get a cool through the line. Trees called uh, We Were Plugged Into the Data Stream of Nature Itself. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which I like in the in the section of the, in the portion of this book that I've read, there's another Cassie computer metaphor that I think it's like kind of interesting. I just like, do you see a lot of computer metaphors in the other books? Like, like, I don't see Rachel making metaphors about like plugging into the data streams of things. I don't really see Marco doing Do you it. Think, I don't think of Jake as doing it. I don't know what Kay Applegate and Michael Grant were like at the time they were writing these, but maybe they actually read, a, like they did a little bit of research for book eight and now they're just thinking about it, you know, because there were yeah computer. Well, I like the idea of like, you know, and we've talked to, at the very beginning of our podcast, we talked about the uh, thought speak happens in, inside tag like carrots Mm. or whatever like greater than less than which is very much like html Mm -hmm. which like is sort of you know a conglomerate entity of computing that we all work to create and so there is like something resonant to the idea of nature that's interesting you know it's like did they read a like a cyber i don't know anything about cybernetics but you know like i mean the matrix a a computer yeah that's true true. is the matrix out by the time this book dropped i'm gonna look it up i'm curious now book nine i think it's still just before the Matrix. you might be right july 1997 yeah no they're just good they're just good when did matrix come out i mean when did digimon come out digimon movie is 2000 not the movie that's the show June 1997. Well, and go. I bet they wrote but this in I, June 1997. Honestly, I think they wrote it. Like okay, yeah, Applegate yeah. Applegate confirmed Digimon fan. Yes. <laughs> Only on go. our confirmed. podcast. I do feel she like... She can come on and disprove it when she faces her fears and comes on our podcast, <laughs> Applegate. Why are you avoiding us? Why are you avoiding us? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say that if a a major motion picture got made involving these concepts, it was probably kind of in the air in the lead up to the millennium as well. Like, because it's like you can't accidentally make a forward thinking movie with special effects. Thousands of people have to work on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway. Okay, so we get to the lumber camp, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is the, the dark half of the wolf morph chapter pairing where this is like really just where it comes out that they didn't have much of plan. They thought they didn't need one. They were just going to look. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Yeah. so they go and they find it. They see a man in a tan uniform. I'm thinking all khakis. He's got his pants tucked into high leather boots and he's got a rifle. He looks like a freaking G.I. Joe. It's very Metal Gear Solid. Mm. It's very... Uh... Yeah. Cassie says, okay, this looks a little extreme for a logging camp. 
Well, a logging camp generally doesn't have like a building with a foundation, yeah. does it? I yeah, mean, and we I hear that they have a command center. The command center <laughs> building was bigger than it had looked at first. It was made of logs, like some kind of rustic ranger station. It was two it's stories a, It's tall. such a weird choice. Why'd they make it out of logs? Because they have the termites. That's. I think they... I know, I know yeah. narratively no, I know, why but they I, made I, it out of logs. I, I actually think that's the only reason. Logs. But like, like, they probably were like, well, let's do termites. And then they worked backwards from there right yeah it's like how do we break into a building as termites yeah. last time we did it as ants through the cracks this time we're gonna do it as termites through the wood yeah right. yeah so they see this place and they go well you know maybe these guys are just selling drugs yeah maybe these are yeah, just wouldn't some that nice, be nice drug dealers what, some nice some nice industrious drug dealers some enterprising young people and then marco's like yeah, but they have a force field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marco was like, last time I bought an O, I didn't. Uh, I don't remember bash them having head force field it. technology. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He actually yeah. says, <laughs> even if they were drug dealers, I don't think they'd have a force field. Cash <laughs> says, good point. And then. <laughs> Great point. Great point. Forgot about the force field. Sorry. Uh, I have a coworker who, does, who says stuff like that, who sometimes he's a very smart guy, but sometimes he'll like sometimes he'll just forget one thing. And it'll be like, ah, oh, well, it could be this one very complicated thing or this very elaborate drug dealer scheme. And then it's like, you remember the force field we were talking about at the beginning of this conversation? And he goes, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh-huh. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly how he says. Yeah. Cassie suddenly feels like a, she says like a knife edge of fear. The human part of her is afraid. The wolf part of her is not. And she trusts the human instinct in this moment. And then suddenly they realize the guards are gone. There's a blinding light, light everywhere. First, it's explosions being set off. Mm. So they've blam, rigged blam, a blam. net with explosive charges up in the trees mm. mm-hmm. so that they can drop it. And so they yes. run, they run, they run. Cassie makes it out. Then the Dracon beams start firing. Mm -hmm. Then she realizes that Marco didn't make it out. She goes back. Marco's like, don't be a hero. She's like, shut up and run. (laughs) I want to ding this a little bit. I want to not ding it like negatively. I want to tag it a little bit because remember, there was a moment as Courtney where there were three Courtney's where Rachel and Cassie could have gotten away, but they chose to turn back. And help Courtney. Mm. Now we're going to get Cassie running past Marco and making it out of the net and choosing to go back for him. It's a really good point. And in Megamorphs, Cassie's Megamorphs, big was, yep. concern yeah. was... Was having let Marco go to save herself. Yeah. And yeah. so we're revisiting, getting to replay and make up for that. Yeah. But it's also going to be a theme of not leaving others behind yes. and identifying with creatures other than yourself. Yeah, yeah. And like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. question like questions of who or what is expendable. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good point. Yeah. The dragon beams are going off. She can't quite get Marco from out from under the net. She's yeah, struggling. Yeah, the net's really heavy and she's managing to hold it up a little in front of him and they're like slowly crawling him out, but it's going to take way too long. And then Axe in the nick of time just shows up out of nowhere like as all these guards are running out and descending on them and he shows up and just slashes with his tail straight through the net and takes a chunk out of Marco's nose. No, is that what I almost read? takes a chunk out of Marco's <laughs> nose. What does it say? His tail struck faster. The tail blade made sparks and sliced through the net, leaving a long gash just in front, just of, in front of, Marco's. of Marco's nose using gash. So close to a description of a body yes. gash gash is gash is the space in between. Like, because you, you will, but it really is. So they run, 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 run. Uh, and then they shoot at them with real guns. Yes. And this is a great tag for Cassie as well. This is like, she consistently gets real guns. That's actually her, true. Uh, she gets shot at yeah. a book four as well. I don't think, I don't remember if she's the only one so far. Like, I feel like maybe during Visser's TED talk, there was a gun, but I there don't was a remember. Gun, yeah, but they were yeah, there trying were men to with shoot. Guns. He shot. A controller. Right. They weren't trying right. to shoot the cockroaches. But not with a dragon beam, like with a gun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like so weird. But yeah, no, Cassie Cassie is the anamorph that gets shot at the most. Yes. <laughs> which is just kind of a weird and wild little consistency yeah. throughout these books. Yeah, and actually she has a line that I feel like 
is basically cut and paste from book four. It's mu- it's gunfire, mm-hmm. good old fashioned human, very deadly gunfire. It's much louder in reality than it is in movies, and it's much scarier to have it aimed at you than it is to see it in a movie. Basically, getting shot at is absolutely nothing like a movie. That I'm pretty sure there was That's a right, kids, don't play with guns. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. there was a very mm-hmm. similar thing in book four. Yes. Yeah, it was actually the plausibility of the harm that was coming to you was was what she described in book four, where she was like something about getting shot up. You know, we were shot up by lasers already, but a good old fashioned gun is scarier than anything because you know exactly how scary yes. that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they narrowly escape and speed run back through the walls, yeah. setting a new record, a personal best as they escape. They realized that uh, they definitely knew they were coming and were trying to trap the Andalite mm-hmm. bandits this way. So the group is like talking about what just happened with the logging camp and they quickly decide that it's not an ordinary logging camp and it's definitely like a yerk encampment. And they sort of finally get on board with Cassie's idea that who's in control of the logging camp might be important, like how it's getting authority to cut down in the middle of a national forest. There's somebody is in charge of that, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then there's a little bit of conflict with Cassie saying it would be important even if they weren't targeting the Animorphs. And she's kind of annoyed that the group is so focused on, like, this is a problem because they're targeting. Right. The this is a problem right. because Axe and Tobias live in yes, that forest. Yes, So it affects us. And like they're attacking the animal. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, this would still be awful even if it didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. It is, like, funny to watch her get so distracted about the frontier of the war. It's like, I, I just can't not side with the Animorphs. It's like, if your Animorphs are your best shot at winning a global war... Then, yeah, you know, logging the forest always sucks. But, like, gotta, we gotta yeah, worry about our animals us, here. There's gonna be no more forest. They're gonna log anywhere, all so the yeah. forest. Right. Yeah. 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 But Jake kind of shushes her at one point, which she is like very upset about. One, one might say she's missing the forest for the trees. That's true. Like, I, it, <laughs> almost to a hilarious extent. I'm sorry. She realizes that all her friends are sort of on this idea that, like, maybe the forest isn't the important part here, but is, you know, and Jake shushes her. Either way, they're like, we need to find a way to get in to figure out who's involved. Yeah. Either way, we care. Um, So we no matter how we the reason why we care doesn't matter. It's just that we all want to stop this is what they come to. Yeah. So then we get into what, Chris, you were talking about before, like. How are the Yerks going about this? Like if this if they are logging in a national forest, it means that's also their their weakness is that they're not supposed to be logging in a Mm -hmm. protected forest. Right. Like it's someone should care along the lines of like how Cassie's caring. And, you know, lots of people should be confused that it's being let happen. As Cassie points out, they don't control the entire government, so they can't have just cleared this and put it through, if they're not being arrested or followed or any of these things for illegally logging, someone has to have given them permission. Right. right. Yeah. Which means somebody probably abused their power or and like there's some actual way to sort of like tattle on them and start a chain of events that could cause at least trouble for the Yerks plan. Like, you know, there's other ways to cause trouble for the Yerks here. Yeah. yeah. And and it may even be possible to legally stop them. Yes. Yeah. If they just yeah. don't have people Why not in the right just place. Get an injunction or call the cops. I did, and they're on standby. <laughs> but my investors would rather I handle this quietly. You can't quietly wipe out a small copse of trees <laughs> and then watch It's a Wonderful Life on TV. You wanna produce films and kill Yerks? You need somewhere to do. <laughs> Wait, can I guess what this is? It's what we used to dream about. Think twice before you poo poo it. Your year ball. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> they get fixated uh, that their only way to to find out who this like who is giving permission or who they're get, trying to get permission from to do the logging is to break into that command center, which it seems like they should be able to go. 
anywhere in the entire Yurk operation and get this information, but that's like their main mission now is to get into through that forest field well, into that building, right? They also don't know exactly where any other part of the Yurk organization is that they would have this. They're like, this. they must have it on hand, right? They must have permits or something. Yeah. This actually... You know, it goes against some of the history back to the origins of Big Sexy News as an organization. <laughs> like in book six, Marco actually just called a bunch of politicians to find out. That's true. And I think in reality, that would have worked here. <laughs> like he could have just gone yeah. around being like, yeah. does anybody know about the logging in the wood in the national forest? Just like, yeah. Who would I like, talk to? Who would be a person who could permit such a thing? Like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I think. This is actually a situation and, you know, again, maybe they're worried about drawing heat onto themselves. But I think this is actually a situation where um, they pick the wrong answer. <laughs> like there's actually a going to the library version of this that's probably equally effective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Writing like, my local congressman. Like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but the book wants them to have to break through the force field to get into this log and camp. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And for the book's sake, I'm glad we're not doing another Lisa yeah. Simpson's episode where, <laughs> like, you know, uh, Lisa Simpson. Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return, or at least until next time. See you soon. Bye.